Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites and we are at Oakwood Village and we are gonna do a Coreopsis Spotlight. Now, when Angelo Petiti talks about Coreopsis, he always says, you can plant a garden with all the different varieties of Coreopsis. He is not lying. It, it, there are a lot of Coreopsis that grow very well in Northeast Ohio. They really prefer full sun, okay? So six or more hours of direct sunlight out in the garden, Southern exposure, Western exposure, Eastern exposure, all fantastic, okay? Six hours or more. The other thing that they like is they do prefer a well-drained soil. However, there are varieties that we grow that are what we call native ours, so that cultivated variety of a native. And believe it or not, because of that native genetic material that they have, they do pretty well in our clay soil. So a little bit of amending with organic matter, your planty mixes, your compost, your sweet peats, what have you, and they do really well. Once they are established in the garden, they are very drought tolerant. So just keep that in mind that first year, take care of them, you know, water regularly, feed regularly. And then after that first year, typically, they do their thing, so keep that in mind. They are a fantastic long bloomer. Once they start in the garden, they will continue to produce buds and flowers all the way through the growing season. So they are one of our favorite long bloomers without a doubt. Now, I'm gonna show you at the end, they do need a little bit of deadheading every once in a while if you can get out there and do it. It does make them repeat bloom a little bit better. If not, you have a lot of little spent flowers and then all the new buds and flowers kind of try to grow on top of them and it can make them look a little bit rough. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, dead, deadhead and cut these guys back. Um, the other thing that you wanna keep in mind when growing Coreopsis is that they really can uh, be divided really in spring or kind of early fall. So if you miss your opportunity in spring and you weren't able to get out there and cut and divide and spread them out, not a problem. Early fall, you can do it as well. You just wanna cut them back probably about half their height, if not more, kind of get all of the stems out of your way, go ahead and dig and divide and replant, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Uses, okay? These guys are awesome for pollinator gardens, especially for your butterflies and your bees. Um, the reason being, it's the landing pad. It's, it's part of the daisy family, that composite family that I've talked to you about before. So your daisy family will always have just hundreds of little flowers right in the center here. They all produce pollen, they all produce nectar, and that of course is what your pollinators want. So this is a really, really great plant for pollinator gardens. Other thing that you can use them for, cut flowers. They really do a very nice job. There's basically two different types of Coreopsis that you'll see. You'll see a Coreopsis with sort of a thicker leaf. This is what we call a lanceolata or a grandiflora. And lots of times they're actually hybridized together. So it's like a Coreopsis hybrid. And so you'll see that thicker leaf, but these stems, these long stems, do last very well in water. So go ahead and use them as a cut flower. They're excellent. The other type of Coreopsis that I have is actually the tick seed type. And you might've heard of tick seed before. And it really is because when they would go to seed, it would look like a little tiny insect, like a tick, okay? That's how they got their common name. But they are more fern leaf, if you will. So they have a very, very fine sort of ferny foliage. Um, this is Coreopsis versitillata. So um, needless to say, you're gonna see these two major families here. They're both fabulous, again, for that full sun, that well-drained area, but also just to bring in the pollinators. They're fantastic, okay? We've got a lot of different varieties here, so I'm gonna go through these really quick. Taylor will correct me if I get some of these wrong. Um, the first one here that is really cool in the garden is called Tequila Sunrise. Now, Tequila Sunrise, the flowers are a beautiful, uh, you know, kind of golden yellow Coreopsis, a little bit of red spotting around the eye, but what's really neat about it is this variegated foliage and the foliage takes on a little bit of creamy yellow, a little bit of pink early in the season, and some green. So they really are cool in the respect when they're not blooming, they have that nice variegated foliage look. 
this big flowering red and yellow. This is called Stardust and I think it's Golden Stardust. I wanna call it Starburst, but it's not. And look at that beautiful red rim. Normally as they continue to bloom into the season and when we get later into fall, that red is going to get wider and wider and wider, okay? Um, so really kind of changes the way that the flower looks for you and the coloration, but again, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I do have this little guy, and this is one of our earliest blooming types, believe it or not, Golden Sphere down here. Um, very short, compact Coreopsis, no problem there. Beautiful doubled flowers. I'm gonna say very showy out there in the garden. They do need regular deadheading because those full flowers get pretty cruddy when they get rained on and so forth. Um, so do keep that in mind. So a little bit higher maintenance as far as Coreopsis is concerned. And this is not necessarily the variety I would pick if you're wanting to attract the pollinators because again you can't see the center of that flower and the pollen and of course lower nectar so again if you want it for cut flowers that's a totally different purpose and this would be a great variety for that i have uptick yellow and red which is a beautiful kind of um, softer yellow a primrose yellow with that red ring around the eye and we're gonna move into the tick seed variety here. Um, this is one of my favorite. This is a buttery yellow. This is called creme brulee, really full and fabulous. Um, this is an old fashioned one called Zagreb. Beautiful uh, medium green foliage with that nice medium yellow flower. And then this actually was perennial plant of the year. 1992 so we're going back a ways believe it or not but this one's moonbeam coreopsis and it's really popular because of almost that sort of neon primrose yellow color on the flower very bushy very pretty and airy i guess you would say i've also got some newer varieties back here we do have a sort of bicolor model as i'm fishing for the pot here i wanted to show you this is one of my favorite newer ones. This is Coreopsis Route 66. And so again, that modeling, that red and that yellow, that it changes through the season. And as it gets cooler, it will turn more red. Um, I also have a beautiful kind of deep magenta pink back here. Let's see if I can pull it up. And this is Cruising Main Street. Cruz and Main Street has kind of a darker burgundy eye, a little bit lighter pink on the outsides. I shouldn't say light pink, it really is a rose pink. Um, but again, it has that beautiful color change throughout the season, but it's always gonna stay a nice deep color for you. And then it's actually, we could say sister, if you will, is Cruz and Broad Street. And if you like the oranges, this one really is a great kind of um, rusty sort of uh, burnt orange. Really, really pretty. The undersides are kind of a golden yellow orange. So really gorgeous. So lots of varieties to choose from. As I mentioned, Angelo loves them in the garden. And again, you can't beat long blooming. You can't beat um, just abundance of color. And again, great pollinator attractant out there and fairly easy to grow once you get them established. So, you know, do look for them. And we're gonna show you in just a bit how to cut them back. <laughs> 